sovereign God, we give you thanks for your mercies and blessings which surround us. We thank you that we have the privilege of meeting in this fashion as we seek a closer walk with you. As we continue our Lenten journey, guide us on the path that leads to you. Fill our hearts with gratitude, patience, strength, and peace. Help us to grow closer to you this life through spiritual disciplines. As we go through today's session, help us to avail ourselves to the leading of your Holy Spirit by committing, committing to deepening our relationship with you and with each other as we journey toward the cross of Jesus Christ, remembering his suffering and shame for our sins and we look with eager anticipation towards celebrating his glorious resurrection. All powerful God, we commit this time of fellowship to you and we pray for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us together offer the Lord's Spirit, our Father, Heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. This morning's session, this afternoon's session, will be informed by three scripture passages. And I will share those passages with us now. The first passage comes to us from Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. We also have a reading from Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. And our final reading comes from 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. We now continue in this time of worship, and I invite now Sister Me, who is going to lead us in a time of praise and worship in song, after which Reverend Josepha Coyorweta will share with us today's presentation, which is the spiritual discipline of Bible study.
I would like to reflect. Try to reflect try on to the, 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 the to our theme uh, this, this week. This week. The spiritual the spiritual discipleship. 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 of the Bible study. That is our theme for today. So when we look at the definition speech in spiritual discipline, a spiritual discipline is a physical, mental activity that a Christian does naturally in order to help his or her spiritual growth. So some important spiritual discipline is include silence, biblical med meditation, Bible study, prayer, fasting, surrender, service, sacrifice, worship, witnesses. There are some of the the spiritual growth for our spiritual discipline. So when we look at about the purpose of spiritual discipline, the spiritual discipline are about being with Jesus and being like Him. Being with Jesus and being like Him. So, so our, our spiritual, spiritual discipline, discipline a consequent way is in way to practice our faith. So spiritual discipline requires commitment. Spiritual discipline are not the end of goal. They are meant to draw closer to Christ. So when we look at about the spiritual discipline of the Bible study, it's help us to see that Bible study is the careful examination of the scripture. So the purpose of Bible study is to uncover the meaning of the text. So our desire should be understand what God's word is telling us. So when we, when we look at about the, the, the spiritual discipline and the Bible study, it's help us to know that Bible study is the careful examination of the scripture. It's help us to understand God's word is telling us so when we look at the bible study before you engage in bible study you should pray and ask god for wisdom and guidance you need to be aware that the bible contains different types of literature so when we look at about the, the spiritual discipline at bible study bible study is a, a lifelong process no matter how much we may know there always be, will be more learn, more to learn. So when we look at in our text today, I would like to, to reflect on uh, what Paul says to Timothy in verse 2 and, 15, and, uh, and chapter 2 verse 15 on the topic, a committed mentor of God's workmen. A commit, committed mentor of God's workmen. Remember, Timothy was a young man who was converted by Paul's missionary journey. And was Paul is a co-workman at one time. He was a, a spiritual son of Paul. Remember that Paul is said, Timothy is my true son in the faith. So being a spiritual father, Paul tried to encourage Timothy to be very careful in presenting the word of truth. Paul also does to want anyone, Timothy, don't let anyone look, look you down. So let no one despise you for you are young, but set an example. That is what uh, 
Paul is trying to help Timothy through their work with God. So the first one, Paul is trying to tell Timothy, you must approve before God. As we go through our Lenten system and we focus for our theme for today, for our spiritual discipline, we must remember that we need to be approved before God. In a particular given text, we see Paul was urging Timothy to present the truth in a way God approved. During his era, there was a strong teaching, totally contradictory to the truth among the Christian community. So they were teaching that the resurrection is already past. That is what Paul is trying to tell Timothy. And because of this wrong notion, many, many believers were confused and shaken for what they believe. So Paul encouraged Timothy. Timothy understand and counsel them to be diligent and representing the word of the truth. So some of the, the word hold is solely foundation for Timothy in doing the presenting that he might be proved before God. So one thing Timothy, Paul is trying to tell Timothy, do your best. Timothy, do your best. So hear the word, hear the word, the word they're using, do. Do is something to do in practice with accent. So it would not make sense if accent is not taking place. As we go through this week, remember that it, it would not make sense if accent is not taking place. So Paul urging something practical that should be done in accent to sow in accent. The second one, the word best, refer to giving full effort to spotless achievement. The dictionary defines best is used to refer to things of the highest quality of standard. So Paul did not ask Timothy just do something but ask them to do an effort. Paul encouraged him to do his best so that he may be approved by God. So for us, I want to encourage us that what Paul is saying to Timothy, as we are in the church, for us who are tuning in this afternoon, just remember what Paul is trying to tell Timothy, you must do your best. So Paul encouraged him, Timothy, do your best so that he may approve God. So the reason is, if he is full of the word of God anytime, would be easy for him to defend the wrong teaching. Because meanwhile, the word of God is the power to reprove and rebuke times of wrong teaching. Therefore, Paul is trying to urge to be ready to do his best and to be faithful in presenting God's word. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, the word of God is telling us to give our best effort that count as acceptable in the sight of God. God demands the best from us. Reading the book of Exodus, the best of the first fruit of your ground, you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. So therefore, being a servant of God, we should give our best time and effort that please God. We should be diligent and presenting God's word. Next one is faultless workmen. Faultless workmen. The term workman is generally referenced to the agriculture laborer. But here we can hear that Paul used this term, a laborer from God to describe God's servant who does not need to be a saint. So which means one who has focused, fully focused on knowing God and not lacking in desire to serve the sound doctrine of God. So 
for us, we need to understand. So they were not accepted servant in the sight of God. So Paul encouraged Timothy. Timothy, not to be like one who teaches us a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of the gospel. A workman who is not acceptable by God. But rather Paul advised Timothy to be perfect workman who does not need to be embraced for poor quality work. So meanwhile Paul encouraged Timothy, Timothy you must follow the pattern, follow the pattern of the sound of word you learn from me. So since there were false teachers in Timothy's time, he was a young pastor, he constantly Paul encouraged him to bring him faith. I know whom I have believed he is able. So Paul is trying to point what they in the midst of the false teachers, disappointment through this perfect workman in work because God is able to help. For us, my dear brothers and sisters, many times we attempt to seek to please men rather than God. Remember, not but seeking to please about seeking to please people but to God. That's what Paul is trying to tell Timothy. Because many times we attempt to seek to please men rather than God. We take God's name, but our ministry becomes people ministry rather than God's ministry. Because though we take the name of God, our focus is more on our own glory. And we become failure because God and even to people. My dear brothers and sisters, we should be God's perfect workmen. And another one is integrity of God's word. Integrity of God's word. Paul was so much concerned about the unreal teaching and the believers. So Paul encouraged Timothy to be truthful and faithful and handling the word of truth, even in the midst of the people who fail to understand and to spread the wrong notion. So they are apparently denied the future resurrection. So for us, as we are here to learn about the word of God, we must remember that Timothy should not waste their time to discuss, to discussing fence evil theories, but he must to be well trained in the word of truth. That's what is called, God is called us. We must be trained in the word of truth, the good sound doctrine, and to, the, to bring the accurate meaning of what it really means. Paul urged Timothy, Timothy to remind the sound doctrine of the word of truth. Those who are going astray from the right teaching of Jesus, because the word is the truth. It's not about human, unreal, intellectual, but it's a revelation of Jesus Christ to us. Paul is emphasized was not to succeed, but to commit it in God's word. So I want to encourage us, encourage Paul is trying to encourage us to handle God's word correctly, that the Lord will give us understanding for everything. In the same way, even today, generation, many Christians are confused, is shaken in faith. Because a wrong imaginary notion, and now God assign you and me to be handled. Remember the spiritual discipline of the Bible study. That is what Paul is trying to tell Timothy, it must God word correctly. We should be like Timothy. And must be dealing with some doctrine in the midst of heretical philosophy. In the era of Timothy, the believers with the community express contrary teaching. Likewise, lately, so many preaching when we hear today, so many preaching totally contrary to what the word of God. The preach of worldly prosperity, speaking in tongue beyond with what truth demands. 
and friends like, if you accept Jesus, you will not face suffering in life. That is the, the gospel of prosperity, which is totally wrong teaching. That's what Paul is trying to tell Timothy by taking one word or text in the Bible and speak and preach. It is a wrong teaching. So being a servant of God is our duty to speak what the word of God asks you to say. You must be thriving in God's word so that we would be acceptable before God and would not be a saying. Our work should be approved by God perfect, perfect and integrity of God's word. In closing up our reflection, I want to ask, ask the question today. How is your work? Does God approve you as a workman? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is true and lay out both the glories of our union with Christ and warning against penalty, disobedient unfaithfulness by living our Christian life in the way that dishonor you. Father, thank you that we have been justified by faith. And we pray that we may become progressively sanctified and we keep our own sinful nature in the place of death. Father, help us to die to our own desire and live for Christ and to present our life as living sacrifice that is holy unto the Lord. Father, thank you for our great salvation. And we pray that we, we stand before the judgment seat of Christ we may receive reward for faithful endurance in the world through our life. That honor you, we pray in no other name. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Sisters, we thank Reverend Joe for sharing with us this afternoon on the spiritual discipline of Bible study. And as we continue in this time of worship, I invite us now to offer worship to God through our gifts of offering. Through our gifts of offerings. And for those in chapel, we'll be collecting the offering during the singing of the next hymn. And those persons online, we encourage you to put your gifts aside and you can pay them into the circuit office. So at this time, Sister Mead will come and lead us in our offertory hymn, Break Down the Bread of Life, number 163, in our Voices in Praise.
your tender mercies, your blessings, your generosity unto us. We present these gifts to you now, Lord, and we pray that as we return a portion, but a portion of what you have blessed us with, Lord, we pray that you would bless this for the work of the circuit. Help us, Lord, to use it according to your will and to your direction. We ask you to bless those who are able to give, and we pray, Lord God, that even for those who are unable, that you would open your storehouse and send a blessing upon each and every one of us. So we give you thanks even now, Lord. In the name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. As we prepare now to bring our time of worship here and teaching to a close, I just want to remind you that we meet again next Wednesday at 12 noon when we continue to look at advancing toward a biblically healthy church by embracing spiritual disciplines. And next week, our superintendent minister, the Reverend Kurt Baker, will lead us in the teaching session on spiritual discipline of service. So please make sure you're there, you're here either here in chapel or online, and ensure that you are able to benefit from this time when we will hear all about how our service to God is a spiritual discipline. Now as we prepare our hearts for the rest of the week, and we, as we journey through this Lenten period, we stand in here in chapel, and we join our voices in singing, standing on the promises of God. And we know we just heard about Bible study, and we know that God's word is filled with promises. So I invite us now to join our voices as we sing to the glory of God, standing on the promises of God.
wonderful time as you did Master Spirit so we can stand in through the power of your Holy Ghost. As we are looking forward to going through our teaching, help us, O God, through the power of your word so we can go throughout this world to witnesses the strength and the power you already given to us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit of be with us today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.